executive orders, right? You want to talk about that? Yeah. So, um, so what, what's one of, what's one of, what's some of the executive orders that you've heard? Right. So, um, um repealing the uh, transgender ban in the military. That's one. Uh, By the way, the majority of the military that I've heard on social media, yeah, don't give a shit. They're like nothing. Ha- it was not a big deal when transgender people were out before Trump put a yeah. ban on it. If you can do the job, do the job. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know why you would you know, put a target on people like that. And, you know, just, just like put it, say, hey, you, I think you're different. You shouldn't be in the military. I, I, there, isn't it crazy, though, that the one party that talks about how they honor the military, why don't you want just anybody to defend, like anybody who wants to defend the country, or, or, to defend or, the country regardless of what, how or, they believe, how they act, or how they how they identify, all that stuff. Or why would you dishonor someone that might have already been defending the country and then you now tell them, exactly. hey, you can't serve anymore. Um, thank you for your service. Get the F out. That's basically yeah. what that's what they told them four years ago. So um, he repealed the transgender ban in the military. Um, he repealed uh, two executive orders. I say repeal because repeal sounds like legislature, but really he reversed. He yeah. did executive orders to reverse two executive orders that Trump put in place that basically um, was aimed at hurting Obamacare, which is mm-hmm. to extend the enrollment periods and to extend um, like the Medicaid, something related to Medicaid yeah. and Obamacare. So he undid those two things with Trump. Um, he's on pipeline? Uh-huh. Um, he pretty much canceled the Keystone pipeline contract um, that one has gotten a lot of people on edge, including people in Canada. They're like, yo, what the heck? Um, so we'll see how that goes. It, it, hey, look, it's a win for the environmentalists. That, I will say this, though. Uh, a lot of politicians, mostly Bernie Sanders, talked about that. It's like, we're going to move away. We're trying to move away from these environmentally unfriendly ways of us getting energy, of us doing stuff, right? But he put it now. I don't know if Biden's gonna talk is gonna do something like this, but he talked about how we the responsibility isn't just for us to stop these fourteen because it's fourteen hundred jobs that people are talking about. He just lost fourteen hundred jobs, which I'm like, it's not a hard stop. Like they're not being they aren't fired right now. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure there's a transition phase, and if I'm wrong, well, I'm, I apologize. But one thing that he talked about was. There has to be a transition for those people who are working in these to be able to transition into working into the new way of life, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's just a part of the advancement of society. Yeah. That's the only way the society, our society is going to advance is we move away from these things. But yeah, there's also is a responsibility on, on, on the country to make sure that the people who are in these kind of areas working on these kind of things that they're able to be transitioned into these better, the, the, the better way of doing things. Right. Right. So, but my thing is half of the people now, I don't know about Canada because, you know, Canada, probably, maybe they have a legitimate, career, but half of the people who are trying to use these jobs lost as a, as a FUs to Biden, mm. honestly, the majority of them do not give a damn about those jobs. They lost. don't, they don't. They it's, really it's don't. It's a political, it, it's a political talking point. That's all it is. Yeah. Now, John Kerry was talking today about, because they were talking about moving to renewable energy and all that stuff uh, with regards to coal mines in West Virginia. Uh, talking about like, I don't know why we are so bent, so hell bent on keeping these jobs, these jobs where we send people into coal mines and they get black lung and yeah. all that stuff. When we can train them up to do these jobs in the renewable energy fields. Because yeah. there are jobs there. Let's and you know these, uh, these coal places, these, it's the same way like the cigarette companies who were fighting against weed for the longest time. What do they do? Now they're buying into weed. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. It's got, it, they're going to do it. So you might as well just, yeah, we do have, yeah, we have a responsibility. And I say we as a society do have a responsibility to not leave these people behind. Yes. But we also, it's, we also have to advance. Train and them for the job sectors. Of, energy. Yeah. Train them for the job sectors of today and the future. Right. Yeah. Don't say, hey, well, the only skill you have is coal mining. Okay, go mine coal. No, we don't need coal. We don't want coal. We oh, want... and by the way, F you, we're not giving you health care. 
for your black right, lung. Right, right, exactly. Because that's yes. a pre-existing we'll, condition. We'll give you black lung, but we're not going to give you um, health care, guaranteed health care. Right. Yeah. You got to make sure that you pay your insurance, your private insurance company. You like them, right? Go pay them. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, so the Keystone Pipeline, um, rejoining the Paris, Paris climate. Paris. Accords. Did you hear about Ted Cruz's dumbass? Yeah. Saying that, um, he cares more about the people of Paris than people of Pittsburgh. It was a, a rehash of something Trump had said before. Stupid now, stupid then. Yeah, right. and this is like, uh, b- by the way, bro, Paris Agreement has nothing to do with Paris. It's about, that's just where you signed the bill. Yeah, yeah. I think AOC like said the, something like, um, the Geneva Convention was it about the people of Geneva, <laughs> something like that. Oh, uh, yeah. what's, what's, uh, what's the Accords from Marvel? Uh, the Sokovia Accords. I yeah. can only imagine like one of the villains saying, oh, he cares more about Sokovia than he does about New York or something. Right, like yeah, it's so stupid. And... But the thing is, and I, maybe I'm just giving him too much credit, but there's no way Ted Cruz doesn't know that it's not about the people of Paris. He doesn't he have just, a way of reading the room. He, he just he just feels like his people that he's talking to are too dumb to realize that it's not about the people of Paris. And to them, honestly, I would be offended if I'm a if I'm a Cruz supporter and he's saying that shit to me. Sorry, I didn't mean to say. S. But he's saying that to me. Um, I'll be like, dude, do you think I'm dumb? Why why am I supporting you if you think I'm dumb? But do this you, is the thing though. People are dumb? Ted Cruz supporter, one, why are you that? <laughs> but two, the Ted Cruz supporters that support him based off of the dumb stuff that he's saying like this are the same ones who bought into Trump. For sure. dumb stuff he says, they, it, it, for them it's not about that. For them it's just like you know, it's just about being mad. It's yeah. just about it's being about mad. Being you're mad. on the wrong side of history, so you're just gonna be mad. So anything, any I gotcha kind of it, thing. It's, it's about being mad and owning the libs. That's all. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Speaking, of, speaking of owning, because you know Ted Cruz is just so easy to own. Uh, this has this actually just happened recently Today. where uh, ALC. Uh, what was she talking about? We were talking about the game stuff thing. GameStop, thank you. Yeah. And then she was talking about how basically hedge funds people are trying to manipulate. Like, there should be something against these hedge fund people basically get mad about doing. No, 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 no. She was talking specifically about GameStop stopping the trades. Like, so when I was talking about how. You mean, uh, you know, no, Robinhood. Oh, sorry, sorry. Robinhood stopping the trades thank of you. GameStop. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Where it's like the cap, you know, capitalists are manipulating the system for themselves, right? And then Ted Cruz was like, I agree. And then she was like, no, F you, basically. You yeah. tried to get me killed. I can work with anybody, yeah. but not you. You can lay, get off of this. Yeah. If you want to help, resign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad to, wor- I'm glad to work with anybody on this because this is a bipartisan issue, but not you because you tried to get me killed last week. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> a few so, weeks ago, yeah. Anytime AOC owns a Republican, uh, I, I love it. When she owns Ted Cruz, who honestly, to me, has replaced... Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell. Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell, I just can't. I loathe them. Ted Cruz, I nothing him is the best way to put it. I just absolutely nothing him. Like, he just needs to shut up and go away, honestly. So so this was put on Facebook today. Um, how does AOC stay so thin when she regularly eats congressmen for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that, it was it was pretty great ownage. I really dislike Ted Cruz. Um, my my number one guy that I disliked was um, Lindsey Graham. Yeah. Ted Cruz is in, inching his way back up there, man. He's he is he is. The, they're both the worst. So anyway, uh, uh, and then uh, has he hasn't done anything with the borders yet, has he? No, the he removed the Muslim ban. Um, he has he, he's. Stop the child separation thingy, and I think they said that they're putting Jill Biden, Jill Biden. I, whenever I say Jill Biden, it sounds like I'm saying Jill Biden. He's putting mm-hmm. Jill Biden uh, in charge. Doctor Biden. He's putting Doctor Jill Biden in charge of the family um, re. What, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Reunion. Reunion. Yeah. The, the... Man, I'm gonna tell you right now. Um. There is nothing that breaks my heart 
when I think about it, more than the fact that our government took part in kidnapping, because that's what that was, and basically child trafficking via via adoptions, because that's what that was, right? Yeah. They separated uh, children from their mothers and fathers and then adopted them. And shame on the people who adopted them too, because you know where these kids were coming from. You're not say you're not a hero because you're like, oh well, this kid. No, this kid has a mom and a dad. If you, you know, you know what I mean. They have yeah. a mom and a dad, so you're no hero. And then our government, our, our the, uh, the, I think it was, I don't know if it was the Supreme Court, but it was probably, I think it was the Supreme Court that basically they ruled in favor of a white family because they ended up being white, uh, white families half the time, anyways. Because they said that the mom illegally crossing put the child in danger, so she doesn't deserve to have a kid. And I'm just like, that is a generational curse for me. Mm. Like, curse on their families, curse on their homes. Honestly, that is, to me, one of the most disgusting things. Basically, that's the kind of things that we claim other countries to do, right? That we claim other countries are doing. So when Trump officials talk about the family separation program, um, they the way they um, rationalize it is that there is a lot of, it's funny they use the word uh, trafficking that uh, because they say there's a lot of human trafficking that goes on through the border, which um, is probably true. It, but, it, but it's such a minuscule number. Right, right. It's probably true that um, there are children that are trafficked through the border, but basically the zero tolerance policy that was approved by Jeff Sessions was basically that, hey, okay, maybe 2% of these are children that are trafficked. Let's separate 100% of them from their families. Yeah. That's where the problem uh, becomes. It's it's a really sad situation, especially when they they went to the um, to the detention centers and they had the cameras with them. It's like Lindsey Graham, it was Pence, it was someone else. And it was supposed to be like a thing where they were trying to project that, hey, we are caring people and yada, yada. And they just end up looking really bad. It's like these white guys looking down on these, you know, uh, Hispanics that are locked up in cages. And, and they didn't even show the one where the where Melania went, goes to the kids' cages and all that stuff and wearing the jacket. I really don't care, do you? Yeah. Um, and, and, and it just it just showed, it juxtaposed the, you know, the white the old white guard, the elites looking down on people that aren't like them, right? Yeah. And I feel so bad saying that because it makes it sound like I'm saying all white people are like that. But no, I'm saying this these people represented the worst of you know the the shameful part of you know yeah. white America. You know, there's there's so much advancement that's gone on in this country, and white people are a big part of that, of that advancement because you don't win elections by having only black people, uh, Hispanic people voting for someone. You need white people to vote for that. You need white people to to rally for certain causes. Bernie Sanders is a white person, uh, <laughs> your, your favorite guy. Um, so obviously there are good people on that, but then you have these you have this bunch. But you know what, historically speaking, those are the ones that have been in power. So of course, right. the ones in power who are corrupt, if that's who they normally are, that's just what they are. But it's yeah. not based on that particular class of people. It just happens that the piece of shit people that are there now happen to be that kind of people. Yeah, so you have this bunch that are so afraid of this change, right? Of the country looking a little browner and a little, you know, and, and it, it almost feels like they're being phased out and this is their last gasp of like holding on to any semblance of power and that's by making these people look like underneath and make you know so it's just it's it's very terrible to see and i'm I'm glad that this administration seems to be pushing more towards a more inclusive you know viewpoint of america biden's going to make mistakes all presidents do um so far i like what he's been doing as far as executive orders I really need him to get the Democratic Senate, like, in line. I know it's not his job, but, or maybe send Kamala Harris to do it. Get Joe Manchin in line. Get Kirsten Sinema in line. And freaking remove this filibuster. Yeah, so, so with Joe, with the, uh, real quickly, I just want to talk about, um, with Joe Biden, I honestly, the thing with the, with the whole border thing, to me, it won't be a good job until those, those cages are dismantled. 
those families. Look, the problem is, even during Obama's presidency, there was a uh, there was separation, right? And somebody tried to comment. Somebody tried to excuse it. Oh no, hold on. Somebody tried to excuse it and say, "Oh, but it was only a couple of weeks." All right, I get that it was only a couple of weeks, right? But a couple of weeks for a child is a very long time, yeah. right? It, it's just we do have to correct our immigration issue, whether that means. And that's actually one thing that I did see that Biden did. That I'm like, okay, great. He's actually. People were complaining that, oh, it's like a 15 year to citizenship. I'm like, but that's the normal amount that it takes to get to citizenship. There's people who are residents for so many years, but it's yeah. expanding on it, allowing more, more of them to be able to do it, right? My dad is there, here for There's a lot years. more that needs to be done with that. And I'm pretty sure he has more plans on the horizon. And I'm really hopeful. I'm more hopeful with him than I was with, uh, with, uh, with, with, I, than I was with Trump. And if somebody wants to call me a lip for that, feel free. But honestly, I'm more hopeful on that end than I was with Trump because Trump didn't give didn't give a damn. You know, he really didn't. He didn't give a damn about that. He still don't get what his reasoning behind being basically a human rights violator down at the border. I don't know. Well, I don't I mean, but I don't know. that's that's what got him there. That's his you know, original play when he came down the the escalator. The whole otherism thing like you know mexicans you know they're rapists murderers oh, some of them are fine people but they're rapists yeah. and murderers yeah you know, that was the original play if you don't live up to that then people will be like hey you're not living up to your campaign promises yeah. even though mexico did not pay for the wall 